Am I the a-hole for not letting my stepmother meet my daughter? Myself, 33, female, and my husband, 38, have a three-month-old daughter. My stepmother is strictly prohibited from approaching me and my baby, and consequently my father refuses to see his granddaughter without his wife. For context, my stepmother had a clandestine termination in her youth and had severe complications which left her infertile. When she married my father, she immediately came to see me and my siblings as her children, being very pushy and evasive and wanting to outdo our mother, who is alive and present in our lives. Even when we were kids, the situation made us uncomfortable, and her obsession with motherhood and being our only mother scared us and drove us away completely. My father, wanting her to be happy, started trying to force us to call her mommy. But eventually our mom got our custody and we moved across the country. Over the years, and a physical distance, my relationship with them became more tolerable. There were occasional problems, such as the fact that she wanted to be mentioned as a mother in the wedding invitations, or when she tried to adopt my niece after my sister-in-law's death, declaring that my brother was unable to raise his daughter. Then before the pandemic, she and my father moved to my state, something common for retirees. She then started posting photos of my ultrasounds and baby clothes, with captions like, looking forward to my baby's arrival, or at last entering the journey of motherhood. I scolded her and demanded that she delete the posts, and that's when the physical harassment began. As we live at the same condominium, she started to come up to my house several times a day to check me, fight with me about what I ate, and set up a complete nursery in her house, telling me that the baby would need to spend the first few days with someone more experienced to take care of him. When we found out it was a girl, she immediately started saying that finally her Christina would come, and how her dream would finally come true. I immediately denied that this would be my daughter's name, and made it clear that she would not be a mother figure to my baby. My stepmother then reminded me that a lot can happen during childbirth, and that it was better that my significant other and I understood that she and my father were prepared for any eventuality, and that I couldn't be cruel, and deny her the closest thing she'd ever have to a daughter, since I didn't accept being her daughter. After that and other comments and actions, my husband and I decided to take some action in case she tried something. And now, three months after my baby was born, my father refuses to visit his granddaughter, even though we live close together, as I don't allow his wife to play mother and daughter with my baby. I understand that she has frustrated maternal instincts, but my daughter is not her replacement baby. So Reddit, am I wrong? Now for the top comments before reading the little update. Not today, Hall. Trust your parental instincts. You're not obligated to humor her. Your father is capable of making his own decisions. Thanks. Her attitude makes me very uncomfortable. And my husband is also worried. My dad says she's just very motherly. And that it's only natural for her to want to become close to the children and the family since she was never able to be a mother. I adore him. But he accuses me of being insensitive and denying my daughter the love of an extra mother. Not today, Hall. Best advice, move away from her. She doesn't care about you. It is clear from the interactions that she has manipulative ways of trying to undermine your choice. She was always like that. I think she resents the fact that my two brothers and I never accepted her as our new and only mother, that we preferred to live with our birth mother away from her and my father. She tried to get a surrogate through an agency, but apparently they realized she wasn't very mentally stable. Major not day hall. Honestly, if possible, I'd consider moving. Hi. Unfortunately, moving is not an attractive option. My husband and I live in a great house, in a gated community, and with an amazing structure for families. Our house is our own, and we buy it without sinking into debt. The most we could do was change the locks, install a fence, and new cameras to prevent surprise visits. My father lives in another house in the same community, and unfortunately he doesn't want to leave here, as it's full of benefits for retirees. And now for the update. My husband and I hardly slept that night, partly because we've been reading your answers, and partly because a three-month-old baby sleeps little and breastfeeds as much as possible. Thanks to you, I was able to see that my father will never protect his children, especially if it means putting limits on my stepmother. But the big point, the straw that broke the camel's back, was what happened this morning. As I work from home, and my husband owns his own company, we decided to streamline the moving process. What was our surprise to find my stepmother in tears at our gate, properly locked, screaming and begging for my forgiveness, and claiming that all she wanted was love, happiness, and that I have no right to deny anything so small to her. For me, it was like coming out of shock. 
After threatening to call the police, my father finally came and took his wife home. Immediately, I called my stepfather and he and my mother came to pick us up. I was glad he came to see as a very intimidating man, as well as being a retired police officer. We've packed a few essentials and the three of us will be staying at my mom's house for now. She lives in an apartment, with plenty of space and three levels of security to allow access. We are in contact with our attorney, who will refer to us to someone who specializes in family status, and we will seek to get a restraining order under our old address. P.S. To someone who asked me in private, my sister-in-law's death was caused, according to the police report, by an alleged mechanical failure in her car. At the time, with the whole situation going on with my brother and niece, I never really went into the matter. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for admitting that my parents and niece are the reason I left? I-29 male have a niece, 19 female, and as the title says, she and my parents are a massive reason why I moved away. When she was a little kid, she was unbelievably disrespectful and just downright mean. She would literally scream, yell, and if no one was around, she would cuss at me. And occasionally, she would do random crap that she would have never done if my mother, her grandmother, or her parents were around. For example, she would spit, throw stuff, purposely spill stuff, and if I ever stopped her or told her to stop, she would run to grandma and tell her I was being mean, and I would get in trouble. And if I didn't stop her, I would still get in trouble. Then a month before my 18th birthday, I told my parents that I wanted to visit New York City, and they said that was fine. We live in South Carolina if that matters, and my niece's birthday was two days before mine. Three days before my birthday, and two before we were supposed to leave, I already got my bags packed, and they saved up, booked a ticket, and were ready to go. The next day, my parents informed me that we couldn't go, because they had planned a huge surprise party for my niece, but they miscalculated or something, and it was a lot more expensive than they thought. If I remember correctly, it was about $6,000, so they used the money that they saved for the trip on a party. When I asked them why they couldn't just cancel it instead, they got mad and my dad said I was being an entitled brat. And my mom said I was being selfish for not wanting my niece to enjoy her special day. Well, they didn't cancel it, but instead moved it back by two days due to some kind of schedule mix-up. I was honestly tired with their bull. So I moved to New York and went to college there and that's where I stayed. And now I'm an attorney with two amazing sons. About two weeks ago, I got a phone call from an uncle about a family reunion. It was a couple of days ago. I thought it would be nice for my sons to meet some of their family members. As, if I recall correctly, the only people they know are the people who moved up to New York, which is a couple of my cousins and my younger brother. So we went, and when I saw my niece, she acted the same as she did before. Later in the evening, my aunt asked why I moved to New York. My mother answered for me, saying that it was so I could go to college. I found it unbelievably amusing that she thought after all these years that was the reason, so I started laughing uncontrollably. My mother asked why I was laughing, so I told her that NYU wasn't one of the reasons why I left, and it was because they were crappy parents who loved and cared about their crappy granddaughter more than their son. And my niece was, and still, is the perfect combination between a crotch goblin, a brat, and a turd stain. My mother called me an ungrateful, disrespectful brat, and my brother and sister-in-law were pissed. I was a little pissed myself, so I just left. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. And great timing before niece invited herself to visit New York City now that she's an adult. Right. Now, Pia, you did the right thing by going away. And now you've had a confirmation that you should stay away. Not the a-hole. The only issue here is the delay. Couldn't you have told them sooner what you thought about their parenting? That putting your niece first and their son second was a failure in itself. Glad you got your life together. I brought it up in the past many times. My father would just shrug it off and my mother would always say that I was acting slash talking silly. When I confront my mom about horrible toxic stuff, not labeling it like that but clearly spelling it out what she did to her, she also likes to say I'm not making any sense or being ridiculous. It means you're freaking right, but they don't understand why you won't just roll over and take it like you're supposed to. Everyone sucks here, but only because of the way you phrased it. If you'd have said something like, I actually left because I couldn't put up with my niece's behavior, and everyone else happily enabling that behavior at the expense of my happiness and well-being, then it would have been a clear-cut not a hole. But the phrasing you used there wasn't necessary in my humble opinion. Next story. 
Am I the a-hole for telling my sister the truth? I, 25 female, took my sister, 16, to coffee on Friday to catch up and spend time together. All was well until she began telling me how much she hated spending time with me as a kid. She exclaimed how all that I cooked for her was craft dinner, box mac and cheese, every day, and that she hates it now. She added about how it was so bossy he never played with her, etc. The initial remark was whatever, but the constant poking fun at me really got to me, and I corrected her. I told her that I was nine years old when she was born, and I had to take care of her because my mom didn't come home every night. I told her that I was 10 years old trying to figure out how to change diapers from reading the Huggies box. How I was cooking her craft dinner every day because I was 11 and she was hungry. My mom had a really bad addiction problem. And we were taken away when I was 14 and my sister was 5 and both given to our dads. We have different ones. They never told her the details. So it was only her memory that was so hard for me. I had been raising her for 5 years and I felt like she was my own. I told her that I'm sorry I did a poor job raising her. And no, it wasn't fun or enjoyable. But I was just a kid too. Part of me didn't want to shatter whatever childlike memory she had about our lives together, but it was too much to carry, and to also be made fun of for it. She was super nice about it, and honestly, we bonded a lot since then and actually talk again. Then I found out that her stepmother had been lying to her about contacting me to see her and telling her I don't reply. I've never been contacted to see my sister. She said she was confused by her memories, but it made more sense now and that she loved me. Two days later, our mom, who is five years sober now, called me screaming about how I got my sister taken from me because I was jealous that she got more attention and I was trying to ruin my mother's life. I told her that I'm not the one who called CPS. My sister's father was, and she just kept screaming and saying that I had no right to dump that on your sister. She has custody of my sister again just this year. Am I the a-hole for outing how terrible our childhood was? I would have loved for my sister to not be hurt or affected by it but I couldn't bear the blame I was getting. Was it selfish? I thought she'd be old enough to hear the gist of it. Now for the comments. There's an old saying that when you sober up a drunken jerk, the result is a sober jerk. If you need someone and want to say you weren't wrong, I'll be that person. Your mother made you responsible for her parenting duties when you were a child, and now she's trying to scapegoat you for her mistakes. That won't wash. Not day home. Good on you for being there for your sister as best you could when you were younger, and for mending bridges with her now. Yeah, it is really difficult having crappy parents and having to deal with their BS and drama as a child. Not day home. Your sister deserves to know the truth about her childhood because no doubt she has been affected by it, even if she doesn't remember it. I'm the little sister in your scenario, and it took a long time for me to process through therapy, and I'm still working on it 15 years later. But I couldn't have done that if I didn't understand what happened. You did the right thing. Your mom is just taking her guilt out on you. I'd like to amend this. The mom is taking out her shame on Opie. Guilt suggests she feels remorse. Shame is when she feels bad because of others' perception of her, rather than her perception of herself. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not taking my husband to my brother-in-law's funeral after I went against my sister's wishes? My sister's husband was sick for over six months. In the past couple of months, he got worse. They have two kids, nephew four and niece six. So I agreed to take the kids in to look after them and help my sister focus on her husband. A week ago, I got a call at 6.50 for my sister crying, telling me her husband just passed away. It was so devastating. I was still in bed when I got the news. I checked on the kids and they were asleep. I had to go see my sister and be with her. So I asked my husband to keep an eye on the kids and warned him not to tell them about their father's passing till their mom get there and tell them herself in her own way, since she made me promise to wait until she tells them herself. He nodded, but said telling them the sooner the better. I told him it was none of his business and he needed to respect their mother's wish. He said I could go and he'd watch the kids. An hour later, my phone rang while I was with my sister, and it was my husband telling me to get home ASAP because the kids had a breakdown after he told them their father passed. I was dumbfounded and so, so mad and helpless. I asked why he told them, but I couldn't hear his reply because the kids were crying loudly in the background. Their mother heard and figured they found out, and she told me to drive her to see them. 
I apologized for what my husband did, but she didn't respond. We got home and it was a mess. My heart sank seeing the kids crying for their dad like that. Their mom took them inside her room and shut the door. I lost it on my husband. I decided didn't want to say anything, even made them breakfast. But when he heard kids talk about what they were going to do when they see their dad soon, he felt the urge to tell them. I yelled at him for going against my sister's wishes. He apologized to my sister, but she said she doesn't want to see him because the kids stopped talking from their trauma. He wanted to go to the funeral, but I told him my sister doesn't want to see him and I'm respecting her wish. He got upset, saying I excluded him from family event, which was unfair and flat out petty. He said he couldn't help it, so I shouldn't hold him accountable because it just happened. But I felt ashamed and a major let down for my sister because she stated her wishes and he didn't respect them. Not they all at all. Do not take the responsibility for your spouse's acts onto yourself. You clearly expressed your sister's wishes. He made the choice to go directly against them. Your sister had every right to not want contact at all with him after that. Who knows how the kids would have responded or been more traumatized seeing him again. You are not petty. You are trying to love and respect and support your sister in her time of grief. Yes, I agree, but he's been giving me grief about how harsh I was towards him. That I should have let him attend a funeral with me, completely ignoring the fact he went against my sister's wishes. And she rightfully wants some space from him. It's not about you. None of this is about you. On repeat until he gets it. What kind of narcissistic prick thinks he should be the one to break this kind of news to children, when their mother is effectively on her way over to do that very thing? Not a day home. Now your husband wants to show up and cause drama with a widow at a funeral? Is he crazy? You need to take a very hard line with this guy. And it's not a family event. It's a funeral and he's an A.